ever wondered what the hell are these on people's ears? And what is that alien formation on my ear? That is what you call, ladies and gentlemen, a collar flower ear. Either you play rugby or you do MMA. And today, we're going to go through the details about a good old cauliflower ear. We are still in Bangkok, as you can see. What a beautiful, beautiful view. Well, let's get into the details all about these bad boys. I'm just gonna get myself nice and comfortable. Nice and comfortable. Imagine doing a video, just sat out looking at this view every single day. That would have been sick. But let's start off with what are cauliflower ears. We are gonna look at a black eye. If I got a black eye on, um, obviously, my eye, it swelled up, there's gonna be, there is gonna be blood. But the difference with on your eye and your ear, your eye, it will go back down. On your ear, for some reason, they don't. They do not go down, they just calcify. So this is when, basically, I've got a black eye on my ear, but, it's not gone down, it calcifies, and it goes hard. So when you get a collie at first, it'd be squidgy. Very, very squidgy. And then over time, over a couple of days, couple of weeks, it'll go hard, so now it'll be like mine. But they have rock hard then. So if someone went like that, it's not gonna hurt. But if you did that, the day I got them, it's definitely, definitely gonna hurt. I'm gonna say, the main way you get them is from wrestling. Wrestlers, is the sport I'm gonna say has the most cauliflower ears in. You can still get them in boxing, Muay Thai, but they're not really as common. Because what it is from, is from grinding on your ears. This could be from your head. So head on head in wrestling. It could be from a knee, it could be from an elbow in Jiu Jitsu. So it is dependent on what sport or how they rub, but each one's a little bit different. As in myself, I think I get them a little bit easier maybe than some people at my gym. So I know people at my gym, they've been doing it 10 years, they haven't got cauliflower ear yet. But I know people that have been doing it four months and they've got cauliflower ears already. So it all depends really, and for that one, I don't even know. I think it's to do with genetics or the new, to do with how your ears are made up. But for that one, I can't really comment. Preventing them a little bit harder. There's no real, real way to how to prevent them. I don't think if you want to be a man because no one wears wrestling helmets for sparring because they're quite hard. So if someone punches them, it's gonna hurt. So it's not really a, the best thing to wear when you're sparring because it's gonna hurt the people you're sparring with and then they don't wanna spar with you. So there's not really any way to particularly prevent them, I don't think. You can get a wrestling guard, don't get me wrong. They can use it for wrestling, but for MMA, it's a little bit harder. And what I do personally, if I get a collie and it gets squidgy, I will then put the wrestling ear guard on and I'll put that on till it hardens up because I wanna let the wound calcify because I'm gonna get onto how do we actually get rid of these or how do we drain them. So that is what you've got to do when you are training because if you just drain it and let it get hit, it's then going to re-inflame and then the journey or the process of what you've done so far is absolutely pointless. And that gets me on to how do you actually drain them. So you're going to put your needle into your ear and you're going to pull it and drain the blood out. And when you've done that, you're then going to get a clip. You're going to clip it onto your ear overnight like that. If it's too tight, you just stretch the, stri the string, the spring on it, and then clamp it on. And try not to sleep on that ear. Basically, we need some sort of compression to drain this ear. You can get a friend to do it. Me, personally, I do it myself. I looked on YouTube just to see how to do it, but it's pretty straightforward. You lob a needle in there, and you just drain the ear out, and then that will put the blood down. Next time I get a cauliflower ear, I'm going to video it and show you. You're literally just going to drain it out. And from doing that, it will help get this, the blood out. But every time you put a needle in, 
it does inflame slightly. So if the cauliflower ear is small, really small, there is no point doing it whatsoever. But if it is big, it's defo, defo worth it. And then that gets me on to when you are draining, you're probably going to drain this. You could drain it every day for two weeks. I do because I train every day. So I drain it and then I, I get another one on the same spot from training again. So it's in that little cycle and it's annoying when you've got a fight. So then you'll get on weeks and weeks of end of having to drain it. And then sometimes you'll end up settling when it comes to draining it. Like I settled for some of these. Don't get me wrong, this isn't one call for it here. This is multiple, multiple episodes of getting head on head or head on ear contact, causing the, the bruise and then it calcifying up. But I drain it and drain it. And then the way I get my needles, there's two ways. I'm not going to recommend it to everyone. This is just the way I do it. Number one, easiest way, eBay, but you got to pay for them. Number two, get on the needle exchange service. I go to Boots. They are free. And the reason they are free is because they don't want to give junkies dirty needles. So then there's an exchange service, so they have clean needles to inject themselves with crap, basically. So you're going to go in, and I at first said, can I have some needles to drain my ears? And they wouldn't accept that. So then I just had to say, right there, right then, can I have some needles? And then I just made up a lie just to get put on the needle exchange service. You get 10 needles, you pick the sizes. I always go with the, the small ones because I don't like big needles going in my ear, especially when I'm draining it myself. You get it in a bag, you get all the wipes, you get a little bin to put it in, you get your 10 needles, you use them when you want. And then once you've finished with them, you put all the 10 needles will be in there. You're going to take the bin back. The bin's literally, I don't know, the size of my fist. It's not very big at all. Take it back. They take the needles and then they'll give you some new ones. The reason they do it is because they get paid for the dirty needles. So when you give the needles back, they then get paid off the government fund or whoever funds it. And that is how the needle exchange service works. But that is the way I drain my ears and it's a way I can do it free. Because if I'm draining my ears every single day for three weeks, if I've had an episode, what's that? 21 needles. As a fighter, we all love to save money. I don't want to spend that on needles. I'd rather get it free. So if you have a look at this, have a look at this. This is my, this is my bag. I guarantee I brought some needles with me in case I get a cold fire here on this trip. Yeah, told you. Seeing them already. Look like that. Literally like that. And I'll lob it in my ear. Everywhere I go, I've got some of them. Next one. Bish, bash, bosh, pow!